Your name, sir? Uh, Dr. Kevin Horn. I am a medical examiner. I'm, I'm charged with examining deceased uh, individuals and certifying a cause and manner of death. This is the palm of the left hand. From the side of the thumb um, near the wrist, there's a fairly deep wound that's going into the muscle there. There are two separate wounds of the palm uh, below the index finger. Were these consistent with defensive wounds? Yes. This one right here, can you tell me about that? It's a stab wound. That one actually penetrates a, a major vessel uh, coming into the heart. Is this a wound that could kill this person? Yes. And so what you have here are deep incised wounds, so they're longer than they are deep. Uh, but they are very deep. They're going all the way to the skull. Is, is this a grouping of injuries? Yes. They occurred close in time. Most of them have the same orientation. Could they be consistent with the individual having his back turned to his attacker and the attacker just stabbing him? Yes. This is a side view of the neck wound and, and it's probably one of the better views to show how deep it goes. Uh, it passes through um, the airway, so the windpipe is cut through, the jugular vein and the carotid artery on the right side were both cut. How deep is this wound? Uh, it goes all the way back to the spine, so it's uh, three inches, four inches. I think by far it's the most significant injury. What are we looking at here? Uh, we're looking at a frontal x-ray of the head. On the right side of the uh, x-ray you can see a projectile. It uh, passes down through the skull, um, passes through the face and uh, downward and to the left and terminates in the left cheek. I believe the wounds of the hands must have occurred before the fatal injuries, either of the head or of the throat. The throat injuries and or the head wound are going to be immediately incapacitating and he's not going to attempt to defend himself after that.